Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode number 64 of Makai World Reviews. It is I, the Tony Makai, Master of Minds and Men. And after the utter strangeness of Visitor Q, we go into, well, another strange movie. And, of course, another Takashi Miike film, as it is his month. We look at today, Gozu. Not one of his more popular or well-known films, but I wanted to mix it up a little bit, so let's go ahead and get into it. Of course, please like, please subscribe. I'm trying to improve this channel, and if I've entertained you at all, you are now legally required to hit that red button. If I've not, hit it anyway so you can get mad at me week after week. Gozu, directed, of course, by Takashi Miike. As mentioned three times now, Mr. Miike is a pretty damn good director. He's but done every kind of movie or TV show you can imagine. From the horrifying audition to the violent Full Metal Yakuza, to Superhero Fair and Ultraman Max and Zebra Man, to adaptations of video games like his Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney film, and so on and so forth in that vein. Written by Sakichi Saito, a name we've seen before this week. As the adapter of Ishii the Killer for the big screen, he returns a few short years later to work with Miike again for this. And this might be Saito's best work, or this might be my favorite Miike film. You can see Saito himself in the Kill Bill movies as Charlie Brown, starring Yuta Sane, or also known as Hideki Sane. I saw him in this, and in the movie version of the Tales of Horror from Tokyo and all over Japan. Yes, that is the full name. Looks like he's had a fairly middling career, to be honest. And Showa Akawa has worked with Mike on several of the Dead or Alive films and Zebra Man. He also worked on one of my favorite horror films in Cairo. Uh, we might know as Pulse, not the American version of Pulse, of course. That was terrible. Uh, seems very busy up to this day, and a guy I've seen a ton of, but he isn't super memorable. He seems to just always uh, have better actors surround him, which is no slight on him, just just what I've noticed. Release date was July 12th, 2003, what came out the same week. <laughs> League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. Adaptation of the incredible series of comics done by Alan Moore and Kevin O'Neill that no one involved in the movie clearly read or knew even the slightest bit about. I have nothing good nor positive to say about this film, and it is Sean Connery's career, essentially. I'm named after Sean Connery, so I have a special connection to uh, James Bond there. Penny Dreadful did a reasonably fine variation on the idea. Two mixed results, especially that last horrid season where they go to America, and Pirates of the Caribbean, Curse of the Black Pearl. First of the many, many, many of these movies, and not a terrible film. I'm a big Monkey Island fan, so when I saw the trailer, I thought we were going to get a Monkey Island movie, much to my dismay. We got this. It's a popcorn movie. I don't recall any of them in particular, but the ones I've seen were fun enough, I guess, if not stupid in general, but I think I only saw the first two, to be honest with you. Moving to the plot, I'm going to try my best to sort of decipher the plot of this film and go over why why that is difficult. It's about two Yakuza brothers. Since this is a Miike film, he likes the Yakuza. Uh, Ozaki and Minami. Ozaki is mentally unwell, and thus Minami is ordered by their boss to kill him. Takes him out to the country and does so, but by accident. But Ozaki's body goes missing, and there's a flat tire to contend with as well, so Minami begins his interaction with the small town he ended up in, and the rather strange and varied collective w within. Well, I will go into more detail in a moment, of course. But the main ones he deals with is a guy with half his face painted white, who helps with the car, and a brother-sister combo, who run a hotel Minami stays at. After lots of circling around to places he's been before, he finds Ozaki, but he is now a she, and not by some surgery or gender identity. It's actually a different person played by a woman. Uh, they return home since Ozaki is dead and the new Ozaki seduces the Yakuza boss who had him killed. After a struggle, Manami kills the boss on accident. Uh, then they then they have sex with each other, Manami and Ozaki. But during, during the uh, act of copulation, Ozaki feels something tugging on his Johnson. And then in a rather horrific scene, the male Ozaki, fully grown, is, is then given birth to from the female Ozaki. She is totally fine, though, and they begin living together, brother and sisters, or brothers and one sister, in what I assume is a sexual relationship of sort, based on everything that happened in the movie. Okay, so, well, that seems like a pretty straightforward sort of plot. Lots to talk about. Let's talk about the characters in the movie and the scenes that need discussed. Manami, he's barely a character, being totally reactionary. She has no real personality besides shock, fear, and confusion. Often all three at the same time. His main characteristic is his penis. He has a big penis, and it's circumcised, which is unusual in Japan, I suppose. How do we learn all of this? His brother and sister talk about it. Speaking of, Ozaki, the male version... Uh, of his scenes of importance. The opening scene with the Yakuza attack dog, which 
It seems like it should be serious, but it's totally ridiculous. It borders on vaudevillian. You know what I mean? He insists this dog that they see outside is Yakuza attack dog, and that's trained only to get Yakuza. So he goes outside, and there's this, this like little tension there. But he literally kills the dog. He swings it around by its collar, and it looks like a fake doll, obviously. The copious amounts of blood add to the humor. Uh, second, the car remodeled to attack Yakuza scene, where he, he pulls a gun on a pie-faced woman, uh, assuming her car is a Yakuza attack car. And Manami actually kills him by pushing him slightly. It's sort of a weird play. And the rebirth, a totally jarring scene. It's really slightly horrific if it didn't have an air of just ridiculousness to it. Like, it's almost silly. I chuckle every time I see it. I have no reason to believe this scene is serious, despite the fact that it's rather graphic. Though for this month, its graphicness is really nothing compared to, say, is she the killer? To the Yakuza boss. So the most important thing about him is he can only get an erection and have sex when he shoves a, a golden ladle in his ass. He, this comes into play uh, near the end when Manami pushes him. Clearly Manami's special attack. The push causes him to fall on the ladle. He then comes and dies. It's a scene that I, I don't think I blinked the first time I saw. It's such a ridiculous but genuinely like hilarious scene. People in the village, Two-Face, I call him that because half his face is white, so it's a birth defect, then he gets a neck brace later, I thought it would be important, but after helping Monami get his tire fixed, he leaves to hang out with people at the diner, mostly just color, guy who is constantly on his phone, the phone, the payphone, cross-dresser waiter, we are told they are actually all dead, uh, but nothing comes of that. The brother and sister who run the hotel, the man looks like Tor Johnson or George the Animal Steel. Same guy, pretty much. He doesn't do much. He runs a milk business with his wife, delivering milk to to uh, the town. And I think if you've paid attention this month, you see where this is going. Uh, we heavily focus on her breast milk because Takashi Miike has some strange interest in breast milk. He thinks it's funny or gross or something. Beyond that, she is a source for some information. And Minami meets Gozu at the hotel, who may or may not exist. Gozu is a guy with a bull's head who gives him a note. It's hard to do a pros and cons on a movie like this, as his mileage will really vary for people, but I'll give you some before the soundtrack move of thoughts. Pro has a Mulholland Drive feel to it, like it's a surreal dream-like quality. Even a scene with a ring phone seems to, to ape Lynch. Though I, I mean that only in a sort of visual quirks, and it's nowhere near the film in quality, content, plot, or anything to Mulholland. It almost feels like a Japanese person who's never seen the movie Megan Mulholland by Drip Off, rip off uh, from a synopsis. It's funny, I don't think... It's all that intentional, but I laughed a number of times. It's got a real sense of humor to it. It does shine through for me. I got a kick out of this film for no other reason than it's just so it's absurd. Uh, the acting is fine. Sans Manami, who doesn't really have any character, everyone else is kind of memorable. They have something, you know, it's just a weird quirk that makes you recall them when thinking about the movie. It's nothing intensive, but everyone, for the most part, understands what they're doing. We would have minor scenes like uh, Chick who runs a liquor store that's American, but she's speaking poor Japanese that's written on the wall. It's just little mem memorable people in, in all through the film. Cons, I have no idea what happens in this movie, if anything. If anything actually happens, the plot is, guy kills brother, looks for brother, finds brother who is sister, has sex, brother returns, polyamory. Uh, now that seems like a lot going on for a general plot, but it's not. When only spends most of the movie wandering around, and then is directly given a note as to where to find Ozaki. He didn't find him due to anything he did. He didn't actually need to leave the hotel, as that's where the note was. It's a movie where he runs around and ends up back where he started to do something we're not sure why he's doing it to begin with. Expanding on that a little bit, outside of the humor and overall weirdness, it's, it's kind of boring, like nothing really happens and some of the humor does fall flat. Some of the people at the diner, the red beans and rice subplot, this whole red beans and rice subplot doesn't make any sense and, and goes nowhere. Only leaves Manami back to the hotel where he was to start out with. It's not good in that way, it's disjointed to say the least. Uh, what is with the weird incest? The Zaki is a guy who's obsessed with his brother's dick, and then he becomes a she, and she's overly sexual and almost like brain dead. I don't like it, it's eye rolling. I don't have much more to say about that, I just don't care for it. Soundtrack, is there one? It's barely noticeable, which sucks because there are certain scenes that could have really used a good soundtrack and, and, and certain that used it, but it was totally inappropriate. It's a horror movie soundtrack, when it is there, uses a movie that didn't, that's not a horror movie. Yeah, really a missed part that could have helped a lot. Overall, this is a mess of a movie at the very least, but I do enjoy it. I, I kind of like this film. Is it good? No, it's not even close to it, but it's not so bad. It, it, it It's not... It's almost so bad it's good. <laughs> it's just weird, weird, and confusing and stupid. I mean, it's a really stupid movie with some shocking scenes. That's about the highest compliment I can give it. 
Um, I said this was my favorite Miike film, and I've, I've definitely changed my mind about that after rewatching it. I think I may may stick with Ishii for the moment. Uh, I do like Full Modi Yakuza as well. I would not recommend this movie for the most part, but I do think it's worth one watch, just for the fact that you can say you've seen it. It's by and large the weakest movie this month so far, uh, but I did want some variety. Well, that was Gozu. What did you folks think about my review of this movie? Do you like breast milk? If you do, do you like it as much as the Kashi Miike? Because I feel like that would be a high bar to, to, to set. Do you hate small towns as much as I seem to? Let me know down below. So please like, comment, subscribe. My patron, let me know what you want me to review. Also, please check out my Instagram for daily Twin Peaks memes. And my podcast, the Dark Peaks Podcast, on YouTube and various other podcast platforms. Next week, we finish up Miike Month with what might be his masterpiece in Audition. This has been Itona Makaya, Master of Minds and Men. Thank you very much, and goodbye.